Hello everyone, welcome back, I am Swan. Let's talk about performance in loops. According to w 3 course, there is a bad and good way to write a for loop. The bad code accesses the length property of an array each time the loop is iterated. The better code accesses the length property outside the loop and makes the loop run faster. To reduce the activity in loops, the statements or assignment should be placed outside the loop. In this video, I would love to test this. If you have a better solution, please share it in the comment section. And if you like the video, then click on the like button to help the YouTube algorithm to push out my video. Let's move on. To test the performance, I'm going to use the performance.now method, which is returns a DOM high res timestamp measured in milliseconds. For example, you run the performance.now method, save this in a variable, then do something. In our case, we will test our loops when we access the length of a array inside the loop and outside, then call the performance.now again, save this in a variable. In the end, console.log the last performance minus the start performance result. Let's see how this is work. const a equal to performance.now and console.log a. This is the time step in milliseconds. Create the second one b equal to performance.now. To get the difference log console.log b minus a. This is where we will do something. The plan is create an array with 500,000 elements, run the loop with array.length times, and we will do this for the inner and outer loop. Let's create the first array, score equal to new array, 500,000, console.log the score array length, and we have 500,000. Between the performance.now methods, let's create our for loop. For let i equal to zero, i less than score.length, which is the inner, i++. Plus plus. Inside in a loop, I just generate a random number, random equal to mat.random. I want to push this to an empty array. Create an empty array, const r equal to an empty array, add this r push random. To say this, console.log r. Yes, we have our random numbers. We don't need this array. Just running this code 500,000 times. Let's create a function called this tester inner. And in the tester inner, we move all the code, then return b minus a. So let's console.log tester inner. And we got our performance time step in milliseconds. This is how long is it take to run our for loop when we accessing to the array length inside the condition expression. Let's create our outer function, which will be almost the same. Let's copy this, change the name tester outer. And here, create a variable x. This will be equal to score length. We save this outside and replace this with x. The rest one is the same and return b minus a. Now we have our functions ready, but when we run these codes, our results always a bit different. So I want to run another function where I call this tester function 1000 times, then save them in an array after we should get our average. Create our helper function, call this tester, and the parameters will be func which is our function tester inner or tester outer. And in our function, we create another for loop, let i equal to zero, i less than 1000, i plus plus. Every single time when I run this, I want to call our function tester inner or tester outer. I want to save the return value into an array, const time array equal to an empty array. Inside in the loop, let's push our function result to our time array, time array dot push, then return our time array. Let's have a look what we have. Console.log tester in the argument tester inner. Save this. And yes, we have an array with 1000 element, which is each a performance time step result. For this array, I want to get the average, which is add all the elements and divide by the array length. And the result will be the average for the for loop performance. Basically for how long is it take to execute the code. Let's delete this. Let's call the tester with the arguments tester inner and tester with the arguments tester outer. Save this in a variable, const time inner array equal the other const time outer array. Now let's create another function. Function average time, which is takes this array, the 1000 elements, which will return one single number, which is the average. First const average equal to, let's use the reduce higher order functions, r.reduce, takes two parameters, total and current, and let's return total plus current, and initial value will be zero. Now we got our sum. Let's call this sum instead of average, and return sum divide with array length. Console.log inner should be slower or greater than number. This should be the greater than. 
log to the console, average time with time in an array, create another console.log, outer should be faster, which is less than, then log the average time, which arguments time outer array. Before I run this code, let's have a recap. First, call the average time, which takes the argument an array, which is time inner array. Now, the array will be this array that we have here, the performance time. This is the execution time for our for loop, which is this function, tester outer or tester inner. So we run this loop 500,000 times. Each time we executing this line of codes, which is created a random number and save in an array. Now this is what we repeating 1000 times and the average time function just returned average performance time. Let's save this and see which loop is faster, the inner or outer loop. This will be take some time. And yes, we have our result. Run the code again. So 9.64, it's slower because it's greater than. This is the inner function, which is slower. And 8.78 is the faster, which is the outer function. The test is success. Final conclusion is, if you want to reduce your activity in the loops, then access the length property outside the loop and will make the loop run faster. Thanks for watching my video and don't forget to like and subscribe. About the code, I leave a link in the description down below. Happy coding. Bye.